This video is a demonstration of the probability of probability distributions with balls falling through a pin board. Let's see what happens when we drop balls one at a time through a narrow chute here and each ball moves left or right each time it hits a pin. This is a pin. Pins are arranged in a regular grid of rows and columns. From one row to the next, the pins and columns shift laterally by half. At the bottom of the given uh, number of rows, each ball remains captive in one of the bins. We have 11 bins in our case, these 11 bins. Each ball hits 10 pins before entering one of the 11 bins. In our case, the final pin is the top of a wall between the bins. We're interested in how many balls fall in each bin, which is called a discrete probability distribution. For our demo, balls start falling as soon as they clear each pin. We won't allow our balls to shoot across multiple columns horizontally. So if, a, if this ball hits this pin, it'll go left or right, but it won't go all the way over there. When a ball hits a pin, it, we have only two possible outcomes. Fall immediately to the left or fall immediately to the right. Because each pin produces exactly two outcomes, the distribution of balls is specifically called a binomial probability distribution. For our first demo, when a ball hits a pin, we'll give it equal probability of moving left or right. The ball never disappears and by convention, we say that the sum of the probabilities is 1 or 100%. Since the probabilities of moving left or right are equal, each individual probability is one half, or 0.5 or 50%. The same as flipping a, a fair coin and getting here heads or tails. For this special case of equal probabilities, the distribution of balls in bins is a symmetric binomial probability distribution. Let's see this in action. When we drop a ball, we will increment the ball counter here. The balls will start off slow so that we can see the path through the pin board. Let's look at this blue ball. It went left, it went right, it went right, it went left, it went left, it went right, and then now it's in the bin, so we don't care about its color anymore. Then the balls will speed up so that we see the probability distribution of hundreds or thousands of balls. When a ball reaches a, a bin, we'll turn its color gray. Rather than show bins tall enough to hold hundreds of balls, let's change the bins to a bar chart here, showing the percentage of balls in each bin. The height of each blue bar represents the number of balls in that bin, divided by the total number of balls that have reached the bins. We'll be interested in the pattern of the blue probability distribution, not the exact numbers. The bar chart is scaled up so we can see it better. The top of the bin is about 30% of the total, but don't be concerned about the exact values. Once thousands of balls are in the bin, the bar chart starts to look symmetrical and centered on the center bin. This level is pretty close to that level. This level is pretty close to that level. This to that. And this to that. Now that we have thousands of balls. Let's number the bins 1 through 11 left to right. The center bin is number 6. To each ball in a bin, let's give the ball a value equal to the number of that bin. What is the average value for all the balls? 
We add up all the ball values and then divide by the total number of balls in all bins. The average value is also called the arithmetic mean, the mean value, or simply the mean. As each new ball enters a bin, the simulation recalculates the mean for the balls in the bins and displays this as the green vertical line. The mean is the horizontal center of the green vertical line. So here. When there aren't many balls in the bins, the mean value can change quite a bit as each new ball re reaches its bin. You can see this, we could see this if we restarted the uh, simulation. But once hundreds of balls are in the bin, the mean stabilizes at or near the center of the center bin. And the shape of the blue bar chart resembles a bell as from a church belfry. This is the wide part of the bell and the narrow, and narrow part of the bell here. This bell-shaped curve is called a bell curve, a Gaussian distribution, or a normal distribution. The mean is a useful piece of information, but it does not tell us how spread out the values are, whether the bell shape is tall and narrow, or short and broad. We would like to have some standardized way to describe the spread or variation of the values, how narrow or broad the bell shape is. We will use a measure called the sample standard deviation. As each new ball enters a bin, the simulation recalculates the sample standard deviation for the balls in the bins and displays this as the two red vertical lines. At any given moment, the two red lines are equally spaced from the green mean vertical bar. The standard deviation spread varies as balls are added, but it stabilizes once hundreds of balls are in the bins. The mean and standard deviation, and some mathematics we won't do here, gives us a very useful approximation or model for the actual detailed data of a probability distribution. Let's change the demo. Instead of equal probability of moving left or right, let's make the probability of moving right three times as much as the probability of moving left. This is easy to do in the simulation, but not so in an actual physical pin board. So now the probability of moving to the right is 75% and the probability of moving to the left is 25%. The total probability is 1, 100%, as it must be, but, but this new demo is not like flipping ordinary coins at all. We see that the mean, the green bar, is not in the center bin. The bar chart is not symmetric about the mean. And that'll be true no matter how many balls we add now. The standard deviation is somewhat smaller than in the equal probability case. We learned about the mean or average value for all the balls in the bins. There is another useful statistical value, the median which unfortunately is frequently confused with the, with the mean. Sometimes the mean and median are nearly identical in value, but in other cases they might be vastly different. Let's learn about the median, but not using the demo of balls falling onto pins. Suppose we have a set of values that we're given, we're interested in, or we're working with. We sort the values from smallest to largest. If some values are duplicated, we do not delete the duplicates. After sorting, the value that is in the middle of the sorted list is the median value. Let's try an example. Here's a set of data. Two hundred ninety-five.
4 and 1. What are the mean and median values? There's three values in this data set. The mean or average value is the sum of, the, of these values divided by the number of values. So the mean The sum is 300, we divide by 3, the mean is 100. What about the median values? There's three values. We sort them, and the sort is 1, 4, 295. There's three values. The, the value in the middle is the median value. So the median value is 4. The mean or average value is 100. They are much different and we should not confuse them. Let's try a different example. Here's a different set of, of data. 295. Four. 1 and 20. The mean average value is the sum of these divided by 4. So the mean is 320 divided by 4. equals 80. That's the mean. To get the median, we have to sort the list. 1, 4, 20, and 295. Now, in this case, we have an even number of elements in the list. So there's not a middle, but there's two elements that are in the middle, 4 and 20. So the median value will be the, the middle point of these two numbers. So it will be 12.